Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about hatchery. Yes, 2019 hatchery from Iceland. Why? Because even though they may have come in 10th place on the scoreboard, it kind of feels like they sort of won Eurovision. Um, and the reason I say that is because the buzz around this band just keeps on going. Um, I got back from Tel Aviv and it felt like the two most common questions I got from my um, my friends and you know Americans that maybe really don't pay attention to the contest that much and may have just seen little things here and there they were all like well hey how was Madonna when you were there and Madonna was there and I was like yeah 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 but then the next question was how was Iceland what is this band who are Atari so the buzz keeps on going and going and they were featured on a popular late night television show in the in in the form of uh, a clip they weren't actually there but um, everyone knows John Oliver um, had featured them and that was just a little bit enough of American television buzz to get them into the conversation because he was framing it in a way of this is this ha Eurovision happens every year and here's what it looked like so they were really getting a lot of buzz and so I want to talk a little bit about who they are and what they're up to next so we know um, Hatri Icelandic for hater. They are the trio from uh, with an industrial BDSM background, and their goal is anti-capitalism. They they made that very clear very early on, and I think if we go back to where they were before Eurovision started, we should have known that we were in for a real treat with regards to their artistry and their their showmanship. They were already gaining a lot of momentum in Iceland because they were the breakout star of this uh, iconic festival called Iceland Airwaves in 2017. And they also had already won the Icelandic Music Award in 2018. And um, the last time they played Iceland Airwaves, they were really performing this song called Spilling Gardens. And I went ahead and took a look at some of the footage back from from when they were performing it. And it looked like they were in this really tiny venue and Matthias was just like on the bar, um, like maybe like two feet away from the, the guests. And it looked very, very dimly lit. Um, even considering that it was a bar, it would look very dimly lit. And he just was, you know, out up there chanting the lyrics and people loved it. You know, they were really getting the energy from the crowd and they were, singing along. Now the lyrics for Spilling Gardens, uh, which translates to Dance of Corruption, uh, just talks about really about how all nations dance to this, this song of capitalism, of greed, extravagance, and um, it just really calls for a denouncement of capitalism. So uh, they, were, they were heavily invested in this. And so you can see actually in interviews that were published for Iceland Airwaves, that they had already perfected this art of really being able to speak to the camera and convey their message and maybe taking um, some viewers by surprise. Certainly once they got to Euro the Eurovision circuit, they took some uh, journalists by surprise, right? What would it mean for, for you guys to bring the contest to Iceland next year? We we're already writing a letter of apology to the <laughs> Icelandic nation in the case that we should win, which we are confident that we will, uh, we fear that the Icelandic economy would not handle the strain. But that is all according to schedule, because we are um, tearing down the establishment, we are anti-capitalistic, so bringing Eurovision to Iceland, where we will destroy the economy, is part of the plan. So. I enjoyed going back and, and kind of taking a look at how they were perceived even back then. And one of the really interesting questions was brought up quite early on is like, how can you be anti-capitalist if you're a pop band or you're you know, a rock band and you're, you're marketing stuff and you're, you're selling records? Um, and and that, that was addressed early on. Like they had already really thought out what some of their talking points would be and how this message would seem really, really uh, coherent to whoever was going to listen to them. So that, I, I was very impressed with that. So I, I highly recommend look, uh, going back and taking a look at, it's called Inside Airwave 17. Um, and you can see a little featurette about Atari. Um, 
The other thing that uh, happened before Eurovision, which I thought was very interesting, was uh, they have such a big following in Iceland that during Ash Wednesday, which is celebrated in Iceland as how Americans would celebrate Halloween, um, kids were actually going dressed up as the trio. So, you know, you'd see these typical costumes like Wonder Woman and you know, Harry Potter, and then you'd see uh, groups of three of Hatchery. So um, that's a really, really significant uh, moment in popular culture when you have a BDSM, uh, you know, an anti-capitalist group being able to relate itself all the way down to uh, children. So, you know, despite the aesthetics and despite the, you know, maybe the, the hard sound of their music, they're a cultural phenomenon. And that was really, really um, a moment for them. And, you know, everyone knows that, you know, they caused a lot of controversy at, during the results portion of the Eurovision Song Contest with their decision to display the Palestinian flag. Um, but maybe not what everyone knows yet is that they actually filmed uh, a new single while they were over in, in that part of the world. Um, and it's called Klefi Samed. I'm just gonna take a look at a uh, quick listen to this. Um, it's featuring a Palestinian uh, queer artist by the name of Bashar. Um, and this to me really reminds me of like early 90s industrial music, um, a little bit of Night Sareb almost, which you know, uh, coming from me, that's a, a real compliment. I, I love that kind of music. Uh, but this, the lyrics for this, like they, they translate to, let's just get this. Walking barefoot, I feel elevated. Oh, it's right. I think it's an echo chamber is the translation. The chant in this is, I'm steadfast. I won't bow down. I won't bow down. I've started. I will not finish. I'm staying and I won't just disappear. So it's speaking to this message. Really, I think the collaboration that was sort of this joint vision where Bashar's lyrics and themes really talk about an artist living under occup occupation, um, a way to find yourself. So I'm digging it. I I like what they're doing here. I like that Atari have sh uh, cho chosen to take this moment and do what they can with it. And I really hope that it prolongs their longevity and their popularity. And to my American friends who are watching, Definitely keep an eye out for them. They are a great band and will be appearing at Iceland Airwaves. I noticed um, on their website that you can actually pick up a Hatari off-duty tracksuit, which is, you may have seen um, them in interviews wearing a tracksuit because everyone knows like when they're on stage, they're wearing this really elaborate uh, bondage type outfits. But then when they're, sometimes when they're in interviews, they look like um, these athletic, uh, track suits and they've become quite iconic because they've been in a lot of the photos and you can actually buy one these track suits with Atari and I just wonder if this picture of uh, Anar means that maybe it comes with the face mask I'm not really sure um, but so you can actually own one of these and maybe you show up to Iceland Airways as a true Atari supporter but if you're spending 160 euro on this tracksuit, I don't know how anti-capitalist you can really be. But hey, we love their music and we love um, artists committed to their message, right? So this is great. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful and you can enjoy checking out some of the links below to pick up some of the, the streams of the songs that we uh, discussed and the YouTube videos, of course, our interviews with Atari. And make sure you can subscribe and like this video and also share it. Um, and this way you can get our future updates on Atari. Hopefully we will be hearing more from them. And that's really it. Thanks very much, everyone.